for up to seven people in the water after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, hit by a container ship on its way to Sri Lanka after two days in port. It would have made landing in about 22 days. Clearly, it stopped right here in the Patapsco River, striking that bridge and bringing it down really in what was an incredible collapse. Melanie Allnwick with Fox 5 DC. The bridge is a mile and a half long along Interstate 695. The Supreme Court hears arguments today about limiting access to the abortion drug mifepristone. Dr. Christina Francis is head of a pro-life doctors association. This is about taking care of our patients. It's not about whether someone is pro-life or not pro-life. The Food and Drug Administration approved the drug in 2000, expanding access in the years since. It is independent. It uses science. White House spokesman Queen Jean-Pierre. The Supreme Court first has to decide that the doctors have shown they have been harmed by having to treat patients who've taken the first stone. America's listening to Fox News. Freedom 97.1 WSME. Live and local. Real talk starts now. All right. It's All right. a Tuesday morning. It's a tragic Tuesday morning up there in the Baltimore sure area. Um, a bridge, a major bridge in the right around Baltimore. They Francis Scott Key Bridge, um, named after the guy who wrote our national anthem, Francis mm-hmm. Scott Key, uh, collapsed this morning after it was struck by a, bri- by a, a cargo ship, a container ship, loaded with various containers. It was leaving the port of Baltimore, headed to Sri Lanka. And about 1.30 this morning, it was off course and struck one end of the bridge uh, where the center mass is, where the transit is supposed to be. It was missing the center route the center uh, portion of the bridge and where the channel is and it struck one of the superstructures and uh, brought the entire bridge down 1.6 miles down uh, at least seven cars that they think were there they're pretty sure seven vehicles went over they have rescued two people one's in serious condition the other is okay the water temperature is between 40 and 50 degrees and the hypothermia will set in fairly rapidly there uh, they don't know about the other people in the cars, but they did get two people out of the water. Massive effort underway right now to locate any survivors and to, uh, to find out. The ship also flying a Singapore flag. That doesn't mean it's from Singapore. Vessels from all over the world fly different flags from different countries. So kind of hard to tell where they're actually from. And uh, you don't know anything about the individuals aboard the ship. Uh, but uh, the, we do know that the ship caught fire. And massive plumes of black smoke were coming from it, along with flames earlier in the morning. Good morning. I'm Rayford Brown. I'm Kelly Knapp. And I'm Lee Barris. And that sums up about where we are right now. After, what, five hours? Yes. Five and a half hours ago, this happened. Oh. And then, you know, that's, that you know, video. If, if there's anything to be thankful about, thankful it did not happen during traffic time, morning drive, oh, morning rush hour. I agree. They said about 30,000 cross that bridge a day. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Whew. The whole thing went down in a matter of, of minutes, if not less. It was like a stack of dominoes the way it fell. It was just it, it buckled, makes you sick. Yeah, it, it just buckled. You know, when you when you get one structure that is seriously damaged, uh, other parts just starts to wobble and come down. That's the way the thing works. Mm. Um, don't know why the vessel was off course. Uh, there's speculation out there, of course, that terrorists and everybody else were involved. Forget about it. Don't listen to the crap. Wait for the official reports. If there was anything else, you can rest assured we will know about it before the day's over. Um, chances are, of course, it was simply a matter of something malfunctioning on the vessel. The vessel would have just started up a short time earlier and was making its way uh, to the open ocean, to the high, to the right. Atlantic uh, when it happened. So it's a tragedy. It is a tragedy. They've got all sorts of resources there. Of course, the Coast Guard has a, a base about three miles from there, Curtis Bay uh, Coast Guard Station. In fact, I was there. Well, it looked like first responders were on the scene in minutes. Well, it doesn't take long. I mean, yeah. You didn't have any real traffic in the area at right. that time of morning, one thirty, so they got there right away. But what are they going to do? you got vessels, cars in the water. you got a ship that's burning. Yes. Uh Nothing you can do but put a lot of spotlights on it. They do have uh, aerial resources there, including the only TV station there that was transmitting live pictures back a short time ago, WBAL in Baltimore. And, of course, WBAL is a powerhouse station in Baltimore. So they've got resources there as well. There is a half-mile or 2,000-foot ceiling 
to no no uh, aircraft uh, other than emergency aircraft can fly below 2,000 feet. That includes the news helicopter, so they all got to stay up there higher. There's what a morning. I know it. I got up this morning, it's the first day to hit, and I started watching it, and I was mm. like, wow. I've always had the fear of bridges. And just, yeah, and as I was telling you before the show. I, yes, the it, one in uh, Wilmington. One in Wilmington years ago, it had nothing to do with a ship hitting it, but a ship coming in that direction over the Cape Fear Memorial Bridge. Uh, the bridge uh, had a lot of cars on it, but at that time, late 70s, I think it was, there was uh, only a two-lane road leading off the bridge into Brunswick County. Two lanes. They mm -hmm. called it the causeway area. Two lanes. So all of that traffic coming across that bridge was suddenly channeled down to two lanes, and there were always bottlenecks over in the, uh, uh, I forgot the name of that little community there just before you got to Leland, but anyway, I guess it's disappeared by now. They used to have a towel shop there, towels and sheets and stuff like that a discounted place. But anyway, all the traffic coming off that four lane bridge stopped some kind of a traffic jam. The bridge operator getting ready to raise the bridge. It's one of those vertical span bridges. If you have them in across it, it does not raise up on each end and uh, it goes straight up. So to allow big ships to come underneath and he could not see the outgoing traffic. He did not know what was on the outside. He just knew traffic was stopped. Right. He put the cross arms down to stop anybody else from coming on the bridge from both ends. And then uh, as the ship was getting closer, he could not see. He raised the bridge. <laughs> there was one car, a Cadillac, that was spanning one of the cross of the area where the bridge goes up. Yes. Part of it was on the outside going down. Uh, part of it was crossing over that. The guy could not back up. The guy could not go forward. Sure. As it started to go up, he bailed out, and then he rode the bridge up, as did all the other cars that were backed up How on that span. So Nobody got hurt. They, That's his, a miracle. His Cadillac went up in the air and came down and came to rest at the bottom of the Cape Fear River and was never recovered. Wow. He was suing because he had some golf clubs inside. <laughs> Seriously, he claimed he had one of those, you know, multi-million dollar golf. Oh, bags. I would have a bag of diamonds, everything that you can yeah. imagine in mind if it went down like that. Uh, yeah, but that, that was a the time there. But luckily, nobody got hurt. The bridge was not damaged. Um, you know, one car was lost. And uh, then they started putting that they decided they better put up some cameras and stop the traffic sooner. Yes. And wait until the last minute. I remember that bridge. Yeah, I when you'd too. hit the hit the just the sound going over it was yeah. enough to unnerve you. I never wrote it up, but I've been on top of that span many times. Oh, no, I've never. Oh, I used up. to get out there. I'd pull over, and that was a great place to shoot photos from. It was a little where the right. bridge guy operator would park, but one yes. on both sides, I could pull off in there and ease over. Of course, I had a marked car, so it was fairly, sort of easy to do. Of course, and I'd get out and shoot pictures. Well, all the new bridges that they built. That bypasses all that are really nice. Uh huh. They're fast too. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that helps. Yes. But, okay. Let's see. What else we got going on? We'll, we'll, we'll keep bringing you up to speed on this as the uh, as it happens. Uh, uh, That's enough, you know, right there. I think there. a news Just... conference is probably scheduled for daytime. Yeah, we listened to one just a little yeah. while ago, but they really didn't say a lot. They had nothing more than what we just talked about. Right. They're hoping. Scary. Uh, call came in at 1.30 this morning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Well. Bridge went into, uh, opera, started construction 72, became operative five years later, 77. So, wonder how many cars have gone across that sucker. Almost the 50th anniversary. It's 20th, 47th anniversary coming up. I think they said a million a year. Is that all? <clears throat> Prayers go out to all the souls that are having, a, you know, that were on that bridge when yeah. it went down. Um, FBI is on the scene, uh, but that's of course that's standard, standard operating right. procedure for something like this. And uh, it's uh, in case you don't remember whether you ever went across a bridge or not, it's uh, Long I six ninety five. So you'll you'll know if you took that bypass around Baltimore. I don't, I don't think I ever have. I, I think that I don't know about going across it. I've been under it. Right. 
Oh, sure, the Coast Guard. Because huh? mm -hmm. that's where I came down from Curtis Bay. I don't think we ever traveled there as the t trips that we would take up to D.C. Because, you know, I was like I was telling you, I had a little sister that was born in Baltimore. Oh, was that right? Yes. Mm, okay. Bethesda. Yeah. The United States is warning American tourists in France to be cautious following the attack in Moscow last week that left scores of people dead. Russian authorities said radical Islamists killed 139 people at a suburban concert hall in Moscow. The warning comes after the French government elevated its national security alert system to its highest level. Italy soon followed suit, stepping up uh, security there. The country's National Security Council met Monday and decided to increase security around Holy Week observation observances leading up to Easter this weekend. I hadn't thought about that. That's right. Pope Francis has a busy schedule of events in Rome and at the Vatican in the days leading up to Easter Sunday. The American Embassy in Paris has now issued a security alert for U.S. citizens in France. This means that visitors in France can expect to see heightened security in public areas, including public transport, places of worship, tourist sites, schools, sports venues, and other large commercial centers. The embassy has warned that terrorists may target tourist locations with little or no warning. It's about time to eliminate forever terrorist cells. I'm telling you that. Unfortunately, with known terrorists already inside the United States, we're going to need to be ever vigilant on our own turf. I agree. Folks, my favorite saying, see something, say something. Say something. If you see something <clears throat> unusual, 911 is a number that anybody can remember. Yep. Just be aware. A member of the Illinois Prisoner Review Board who signed off on the release of a man with a long criminal record for domestic violence, who then killed an 11-year-old boy and injured his pregnant ex-girlfriend a day after walking free, has resigned. Good for her. Leanne Miller conducted the hearing for 37-year-old Crosetti Brand, who was serving a 16-year sentence for a home invasion and aggravated assault when he was paroled early. Brand is charged with several crimes ranging from first-degree murder now and attempted first-degree murder for the vicious attack that had killed Jaden Perkins and injured Latera, Latera Smith. Brand was released from the Statesville Correctional Center with electronic monitoring on March 12th just before he stabbed the 11-year-old Perkins as he came to the aid of his mother, she too was stabbed. The knife wound severed a major artery and the boy bled to death. Gosh. Perkins' five-year-old brother witnessed the attack on his family but was unharmed. Bran was arrested two hours after the stabbing. Smith was getting the boys ready for school when Bran broke into their home around 8 a.m. on the 13th, the day after he got out of prison. Oh, Brand and Smith had a prior relationship more than 15 years ago while he was on parole the first time last October. Wait. Yes. Yeah. He was paroled in October. Mm -hmm. He didn't behave himself. So he was put back in. And then he was paroled again on the 12th of this month. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Negligence. Court system. Ideology. It's not the court system. I think it's ideology. It's not the court system. Then what? What? Why didn't they keep them in? The okay. Illinois Prisoner Review Board, an independent 15-person body, imposes release yeah. conditions for those in prison and conducts hearings to determine whether to grant or deny parole. It also makes recommendations to the governor about clemency petitions. Governor J.B. Pritzer said the board and the Illinois Department of Corrections will review, review rules and procedures for receiving information related to cases involving domestic violence. I've got an idea. I'm sure you do. Kelly? Mm -hmm. How about a review board made up of real victims of domestic violence to listen to the pleas and sob stories of men like Prisoner Brand? Let them make a decision as to the futures of such scum. I say a mix of therapists. And victims. And any one of them can negate all the others. If they want to release it just like a regular jury, one person can say, oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. Done deal. Phew. It's too much of it. We heard about the officer that was shot and killed yesterday I in did. Queens, New York. Yeah, I did. Have you got the story on that one? A multiple time offender. 21 prayer arrest. 
And one of them was a recent gun charge in April 2023. Why is he out That's what I'm jail. saying. That's what I'm saying. Two officers with the community response team stopped the vehicle, and as they were approaching it, the driver pulled a gun and shot one of the officers in the stomach. It's just 21 prior arrests. 5.48 in the afternoon. Yes. Part of the NYPD's community response team because it was parked illegally. If they stopped and checked the car because it was parked illegally, how many times have every cop that I know of ever done that? Just to right. check it to be sure everything is okay. Yeah, exactly. Where did he get the gun? I want to hear this. Yes. Was it stolen? Did he purchase it legally somewhere? Did he get it from the South, where they say all the guns from in New York come from the South? <laughs> well, <clears throat> that would be interesting to know why they think that. Why, why are they not telling us about this? They run the serial number, and they know it's stolen, likely, sure. if it was stolen. Sure. I mean, chances are it was. He certainly didn't go to a store to buy it. I wouldn't think so. I'm sure a thug friend got it more. The 31-year-old, 34-year-old guy, like you said, 21 prior arrests. As they approached his car, he pulled a gun and pointed it at them when he refused to exit the car. They told him to get out of the car, and he said, uh-uh, and he points a gun at him. <clears throat> he opened fire. He struck one of the officers in the stomach underneath his bulletproof vest. Right. Another officer returned fire, struck the guy. He was a passenger in the vehicle. The wounded officer rushed to make a hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The gunman was also taken to a hospital and a gun was recovered at the scene. I would have thought that other officer was fired more than one round into is he still, the carcass of is the he other. still breathing? <laughs> as far as I know, he is. What a crazy story. The shooter was last released from a New York prison in 2021 after serving five years behind bars for criminal possession of a controlled substance. His parole in that case ended last year. What? His parole ended last year, although he was no longer on parole. After you complete your, if right. they get you out on parole, on. you're not on parole for the rest of your life. Are we still talking about he had 21 priors? Yep. And he's off of parole? Yep. Okay. The driver of the vehicle, a 41-year-old, arrested in 2023 on a gun charge. April 2023, arrested on a gun charge. Here's the problem. Why isn't he still in prison? Oh, less than a year. He's saying. back on the streets with another gun. I don't know. We have a lot of issues in this country we need to give a lot of attention to. I'm sorry. You bleeding heart. Whether you're live on local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, AM, WSME. Weather is next. Freedom 97.1 WSME. Is your phone plan messing with your savings plan? Don't get stuck paying for things you don't want. With Verizon, you only pay for what you need. And for a limited time, when you bring your own phones to a Verizon store, you'll get an amazing price on your plan. Plus, you'll save on things you actually love, like the Netflix and Max with App Bundle. And it's on our award-winning 5G network. Bring your phones to your Verizon store today for an incredible deal. A better plan to save is Verizon. Additional terms and conditions apply. Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to Discover. Eligibility in terms of discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. <laughs> 
A plan every adult family member should consider is the pre-arranged funeral. It's the worry-saving thing to do for your family. Making pre-arrangements helps to alleviate the additional stress on family members that can come with arranging a loved one's funeral. Jones Funeral Home's prepaid funeral plan helps remove confusion. They make a practical evaluation of costs possible, and it's the best way to take an unpleasant task off the shoulders of the family. Call Jones Funeral Home at 455 one Two, eight, one. With locations in Jacksonville, Richland, Swansboro, and Holly Ridge. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper in print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full color ads and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net, where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. If your plans include hitting the road this year to do some traveling, make sure a visit to Silent Service Center is on your to-do list. Travel safety starts with the tires on your vehicle, and a visit to Silent Service Center will give you peace of mind with the best value in all name brand tires and the largest selection of used tires in this area. In addition to quality tires, Silent Service Center is a North Carolina inspection station and does complete brake service, oil changes, and alignment service. Silent Service Center, 1707 Lejeune Boulevard, Jacksonville, and 108 West Main Street, Block. Phone 90 353 4760. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. It's time for your marine forecast. And if you're planning on going offshore today, <laughs> stop it. Small craft <laughs> advisors in effect through late Friday night. Northeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots offshore, seas 5 to 8 feet, 2 to 4 near shore. If you want to fish the ocean, stay close to shore. Dominant period, 11 seconds. That's the good part. Sounds and rivers, a moderate chop. That's the better part. Easterly winds tomorrow, 5 to 10 knot seas. They're still hanging in there, 4 to 6 feet, 2 to 3 on the beach. Sounds and rivers are like chop. And on Thursday, easterly winds 10 to 15, becoming northeasterly 15 to 20 in the afternoon. Then switching around to the north, 20 to 25 knot seas, kicking up again, 4 to 6 feet. Sounds and rivers, a moderate chop, becoming choppy in the afternoon, then increasing to Kelly Ruff. Nice. Today, mostly sunny, a high of 65, 5 to 7 mile an hour winds coming from the north. Tonight, mostly cloudy, low of 50. That's not bad. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, a high of 68. Tomorrow night's when things get interesting. Showers and thunderstorms likely before 11 p.m. Then showers and thunderstorms until the morning. Some of the storms could produce heavy rainfall. Otherwise, in between the storms and showers, cloudy at low of 59, with tomorrow night's rainfall amounts between 1 and 2 inches. On Thursday, rain before 11 a.m., then showers between 11 and 5, and then rain likely after 5. Why don't they just say rain all day? <laughs> the rain could be very heavy at times. The high on Thursday will be 63, with 10 to 15 mile an hour winds and gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. Why they didn't say rain all day Thursday? Yeah. They cut all that out. They put the day. times <laughs> trying to be accurate. <laughs> Did you ever hear of Diddy Combs? Yes. Yeah. Mm, Sean Diddy Combs, yes. rapper Diddy Combs. I watched Diddy. that last yeah. night. He did it. Yep. Well, his L.A. and Miami homes were raided by Homeland Security yesterday as agents continued investigating possibly human trafficking matters. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of additional information available yet, at least not from official sources. Naturally, social media and entertainment media are spreading all over the place. All sorts of speculation coming from it. I don't know enough about it to comment. I don't even know who he is. That's we currently right. don't care about those other outlets when it comes to providing facts, believe it or not. He's being sued for sexual uh, yes. assault in the and, past. Yes, he has. And mm -hmm. since I have never heard of this gentleman, I have no opinions to offer. Stay tuned, as they say, and we'll see what the official <laughs> sources say. Texas has got Mexico up in arms. All I can say is remember the Alamo. 
The Mexican government has claimed in a court filing. Mexico has claimed in a court filing that a Texas anti-illegal immigration law currently being challenged by the Biden administration would, if enacted, impinge on Mexico's sovereign right to determine who enters the country. Right to determine who enters whose country? Ours? Mexico filed an amicus brief last week in support of the Biden administration's Senate Bill 4 an anti-illegal immigration law that would allow police to arrest illegal immigrants and allow state judges to order them deported. The law was signed by Governor Greg Abbott back in December, but it's been on hold due to a challenge from the Biden administration. How many illegals have entered Texas since this challenge started, huh? Think about it. Mm -hmm. Says the law is unconstitutional, hurts international relations, and impedes upon the federal government's enforcement of immigration law from where I sit. The only thing that impedes upon the federal government's enforcement of immigration law is the federal government. Texas has argued that the law is necessary due to the Biden administration's failure to secure the southern border and enforce immigration law. In its brief, Mexico argues that the law going into effect creates a substantial tension on U.S.-Mexico relations, including trade. It could also lead to discrimination against Mexican nationals. Discrimination against Mexican nationals. Okay, so what? If Mexico is so concerned about relations with the U.S., trade relations with the U.S., there was discrimination against legal Mexican nationals, then I suggest that Mexico stop providing easy access at its southern border with Central and South America and put a roadblock up to prevent those using the country as a freeway to the United States. Mexico could also mobilize an army to stop the wide-open drug routes. I believe, that are protected by the Mexican government, keeping their drugs inside their own country. Again, going to repeat this for those of you who are slow. During World War II, more than 300,000 American soldiers died, were murdered, killed in battle. 300,000 in three and a half years. Last year, Kelly, I'm going to rely on you for the expert figure. Last year in this country, X number of Americans were killed by fentanyl overdoses. And that number would be? 112,000. 112,000. So multiply that times three and a half years. We're going to come out with well over the number of Americans killed in three and a half years during World War II. That 112,000 is going to continue to grow. Yes. A year earlier, I think it was 107,000. 107, so 112,000 last year. So in uh, three more years, it'll be up to about 120? At the rate we're going, sadly, yes. That would be equivalent pretty close to about 400,000 mm-hmm. killed in three and a half years. Yes. Where am I missing the picture? What's wrong with me? Nothing. We went to war and lost 300,000 Americans Mm -hmm. fighting for a cause. Protecting American lives is not a cause these days. I guess it depends on who you ask. And we had not been invaded at that time. Right. In World War II. Well, we were in uh, um, In Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. I agree. I I, agree. I'm, I'm absolutely missing something here. We have a mm-hmm. special guest in the studio today. We do. We do. The Reverend Ike Johnson. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Skipper. How are you? He's about to add a title to you. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what? He's a Marine. I, I know he's a Marine. Skipper. But a lot of people could refer to him as, uh, as a man of the cloth, too, because he's a believer. Yes. Am I right? Yes. I'll tell you absolutely. what now. And he's going to talk about the book he wrote from Average to Excellent. Which I, I just love some of the quotes in there. I read this <laughs> book and it made me, actually, it made me want to be a better person. Oh, that's good to hear. We, yeah. all, we all should what be a better person. A person's. book and the, your distinguished career. It, we'll let you talk about it, but yes, the quotes, excellent quotes. Grew up on um, Mississippi. Yes, it, yes, sort of a rough time back in the fifties and sixties. Yes, it was uh, during the Jim Crow era. Yep, uh, on a little farm, hundred twenty acre farm. That uh, one hundred and twenty acres is a little acres, farm. A little farm. Well, I felt like it was. <laughs> <laughs> By today's standards, it probably was a little farm because uh, you know we we lost a lot of family farms of one hundred and twenty yes, acres. Absolutely. 
been sucked up by big business. Yes. But you grew up in such a tight knit family with parents that really instilled the values of life in all of you. Yes. Um, my father was a preacher. Yep. My mother was a God fearing woman. And uh, we had uh, a large extended family. My mother had 15 brothers and sisters. Sure. And uh, about eight or 10 of them had 10 kids as well. Wow. So I grew up in like you had a family of 10. We did. Uh, That's a whole city right there. Uh, yes. It's his own Marine Corps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we covered lot. several several communities within the area we, we grew up in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't trade that life for another life, would you? No, no. I didn't it's, think so. Uh, challenging, but uh, I wouldn't trade it because uh, it uh, it did shape me into who I am. That and uh, a little organization called the United States Marine Corps? Yes, that, yeah. uh, <laughs> that, that put the crowning touch on it, I think. For the accomplishments <laughs> that you under that you went what you did in the marine corps was so fascinating to go from one you set goals yes. and you worked hard to achieve those goals and that's what this book is all about yes uh once i, I discovered how to to set goals and accomplish them uh it was kind of the turning point for me because uh, uh growing up in the environment that i grew up in it was it was a loving environment but uh, very challenging uh picking cotton, uh, working on the farm. It was uh, uh, one of those lifestyles, uh, plowing the mules. Uh, you probably can identify Milk with something. Milking the cows. I, I know all about the cows. Uh, so it was, uh, it, it was no end in sight when I was uh, a little boy looking at it from that perspective. But, uh, but we had a, had a close-knit family. Uh, the schools were segregated. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the teachers was doing the best they could. Uh, the examples that we we had was uh, what we had. Uh, I think the only professionals I saw was probably the teachers and, and uh, preachers. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that was uh, always good to aspire to be a teacher. But on the <laughs> other hand, uh, my father was a preacher, so I wasn't aspiring to be that. <laughs> but uh, I understand you. Uh Okay, we call you Ike. Ike, yes. Okay, but your real name is two different names. Yes, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. It okay. is. It is Isaac. It's Isaac, but but uh, of course, back in those days, uh, you was delivered by a midwife, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the story is that my mother and father told my the midwife that my name was to be Isaac, and I, when she was filling out the paperwork, she went into the Bible. And she thought she would find that in the Bible. <laughs> I think she found the book of Isaiah. Not close. Because there's no book of Isaac. Right. There's a story of Isaac, but not a book. Uh, and and she pinned Isaiah. And so. Uh, That's on your birth certificate. On my birth certificate. So when I came in the Marine Corps, I became Isaiah. Uh, oh, really? If I go back home now. Surprise. Everyone <laughs> calls me Isaac. Do you so, have a passport? I do. What is this? It is Isaiah. <laughs> For 19 years, you didn't know until Isaiah. you went to go into the Marine Corps yes. and found out. Oh, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, here's Can a I parallel. You ready for this one? My mother was born Marguerite, oh, okay. but they left off the T mm -hmm. on her birth certificate, wow. so she became Marguerite. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's an unusual name. Yeah. Huh. Well, was, I never heard it before, but anyway, they yeah. just left off the T, so they just left it that, that way. Well, it's, it's, you have to live with it, I think, unless you, 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 can, you can't change it. But uh, I named my son Isaac uh, because oh, we, have, we have an uncle uh, named Isaac. So uh, he's Isaac II. Sure won't move. So uh, back when you turned 20 years of age, you got rid of the teenage years behind you. Yes. And you decided uh, the draft was going to come get you at that time. I had uh, I had a number. Mm -hmm. I did. And uh it did not, uh, when I was 17, I, I had gone and with my brother. He was going to come in, and I just kind of for fun went to the AFU station with him and uh, took the test, and and I think I was going into the 12th grade at the time, but I didn't I didn't follow up. He didn't follow up either. <laughs> we have a, a, you can see my book, I have a brother-in-law that's in the Marine Corps who's inspired me to to be in the Marine Corps as well. Cool. Uh, but, uh, but I didn't act on it at that time. Um, but, uh, after trying a couple of things, uh, everybody don't go to college. I went to college for three months or so, and that wasn't working out. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I got a trade in welding and uh, went to the shipyard in Pasco, Mississippi. Okay. And I was uh, I was working there. Three months later, yes, you left. I, I still uh, showed me that wasn't my purpose either. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I I did uh, eventually come into the Marine Corps. Thirty years before that, my dad worked at the shipyard in Wilmington. Oh, just before World War II and the beginning of yeah, World War II. It's an interesting place. Yeah. So yeah. and he was a welder. Oh, wow. so, okay. <laughs> just just telling you, there are a lot of parallels there. Yes, we might be related. You know? <laughs> okay, you went back to uh, in the Marine Corps. Did you did you go back into criminal justice, take classes when you were in the Marine Corps? Is that the way it was? I, I got a degree in the in the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, I was an infantry going in, and uh, I quickly became a drill instructor after I, uh oh I took a bonus going in, and that pinned me to the infantry field. The guy uh, that everybody hated down at PI, right? Yes, I turned into one of those folks. And, and at uh, that time, it was like a $1,500 bonus? It was. That was, uh, my brother-in-law had cued me to that, so that's why I took the infantry field. Uh, and the only way that I could shed that field within the first four years was to take a B billet. B billets are being a drill instructor and being a recruiter. Mm -hmm. And so I chose to, <laughs> I chose the drill instructor route, and uh, fortunately, I... You were not going to be a desk guy, were you? Uh, no. I, I just out, can't imagine you guy. as a drill instructor because you're People so soft-spoken. Uh, I made meritorious uh, staff sergeant within four years on the drill field. Sure. Four years in Oh, I can see you there. Yeah. That you're means you're kind of good. imposing to yes. a lot of young 18-year-olds coming well, in. I just tried to do my job well. And, uh, so it worked out, worked out very well. So eventually, after obtaining your degree in criminal justice and psychology, in January 1983, you reported back to here yes, I did. and worked with the military police. Um, and you had 35 military policemen and women under your leadership. I did. Here at Camp Lejeune, uh, you may, someone may remember uh, Colonel Billy Sumlin. I remember <laughs> he was, him, yes. He was a provost marshal at the time, and, and we became good uh, friends as colonels and gunners, gunner sergeants go. And uh, he befriended me, and I befriended him. and. Uh, we played basketball together. We did a lot of things. We ran together. And uh, he encouraged me to become a warrant officer. I'd already had been pursuing it. But uh, I put him forward the first time and, and did not get selected. And uh, I got a to see with Coon at the time. And he uh, begged me to, to stay here and pursue again. And uh, I explained to him that I always took my orders when they sent them to me. So I did. So I went to Iwakuni and, and uh, got selected uh, on the next round there, but not in the military police field. I got selected in the bulk fuel field as a bulk fuel officer. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, post-military. Mm -hmm. It says you were diagnosed with PTS at one time. Yes. Uh, after combat? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that did a storm. Uh, the, Still deal with it sometime, but I'm uh, sure. but I'm <clears throat> I'm doing okay. Uh, and we didn't call it that back then. Nope. Uh, it was just battlefield stress or whatever you want to call it. Uh, doing Desert Storm, I had uh, I had just uh, transitioned. I, you probably read my book. I transitioned from MOSs to jobs to jobs, uh, fields of transition, not just collateral duties. I went from infantry to military police. and uh, Then to food service. Uh, yes, my last 10 years of food service. And I was just transitioning to the food service field when I got the, the call to go to Desert Storm. <laughs> and I had gone to, to school, of course. I, right. <laughs> but I had been an engineer, uh, okay. maintenance officer before that. But uh, it served me well. Of course, all experiences in life serve us well. We don't know why we have them sometime, but they they do come to rescue when when uh, when they need it. But I transitioned. Uh, I was in fact I was in school here uh, and uh, first division had already taken off from Camp Pendleton where I just transferred into and the, the general and my boss was sending messages, take him out of school and and get him over here. Uh, they decided to let me finish school. And as soon as I, my family had just moved there, he was still in the hostess house, his families are waiting for a house. And I got back to California, spent two days, and I was on the verge to uh, dead storm. 
Wow. Uh, sure. I was fast tracking with my three months of uh, food service school. But once in um, at, in Saudi Arabia, you were working as a food service officer, yes, but uh, you were responsible for developing one of the largest filled mess halls in history. Yes. Uh, which earned you a promotion and a bronze star. Yes. And that wasn't... Uh, <laughs> That wasn't by choice. It was by situation. Uh, uh, one of the, the things that we encountered in Desert Storm was uh, uh, it, as all wars are, uh, they're not what you expect. They're not, uh, you know, you, you, you they're train, not clean. Yeah, you train for desert, you, you end up in the jungle. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, we ended up in the desert on this one. But, um, but the, the, the textbook version of food service was not applicable to what I had learned in those three months and what I understood about food service my 18 years in the Marine Corps. And of course, uh, in the middle of the desert, uh, no water, uh, limited transportation uh, to get things from point A to point B. Uh, this notion of, of putting everything in one place was kind of risky. Uh, in fact, I went against the wisdom of my my seniors who was in food service who uh, could not give me a better ideal. I was the first lieutenant at the time, and, and these guys was majors and lieutenant colonels, and they told me to do 5,000 5, 5, messes around the desert within the area of operation, and I reminded them that I had no resources to support that many messes. And, uh, and of course, uh, after I did not follow those instructions and I, I kind of, with the help of my team, uh, we came up with this, this, uh, this large concept because of the limited equipment, limited, uh, uh, water sources, supplies, fuel, everything it takes to drive a, a, a mess. Um, we decided to go with, uh, with putting everything in one place and I uh, put the feed plan together for the general general Mike was the, the general and he had me sell it to his commanders uh, which was uh, challenging uh, as a first lieutenant and most of these guys if I call their names they, they're generals now there was generals came out generals uh, but they bought the plan and when I took it back to my senior food service meth level uh, he told me that he was going to tell General Boomer to tell my general that I was crazy. I was uh, <laughs> that I was uh, inexperienced, and I was, uh, and I didn't know what I was doing. So, but you had an idea. I had an idea. Okay, God-given idea, and it worked. It worked. Well, it worked. It worked. What else can you ask for? <laughs> and the, the, my general had that confidence in me to uh, to take the risk, and uh, and it came out successful. On Thanksgiving Day, we fed uh, President Bush, mm -hmm. uh, number, one, well. number one Bush, yeah. and uh, worst day of my Marine Corps career. But uh, <laughs> weren't you? Weren't but, we didn't like the food. Uh, he no. loved the food. Okay. After, uh, weren't you getting a little flack for being a little late getting there? I was there? a little late getting getting uh, that day on Thanksgiving Day. We fed uh, at the height of the war. We was feeding twenty five thousand meals twice a day. Wow! And uh, and of course on Thanksgiving Day we 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 had reporters from all over the world uh, wanted to see what Marines were eating that day. So we started up about, about two or three in the morning getting that done. And I had 3,500 meals that I was to take to the, to the CP where the president was going to be and uh, deliver that historic speech. Uh, and, uh, and so his cook had been with me, the president cook had been with me for four, four or five days. So he has to, the old cup bear thing still exists. Uh, mm -hmm. He had to see the food being prepared sure. in the can, and the can that he gets his plate from has to still be invoked. So that's why he followed me around for a week. Uh, but uh, that day when I got ready to move these 3,500 meals to the place where the president was going to be, and we was going, we we practiced this thing. Uh, the Marines, 3,500 Marines would be there eating, and he would come off the helicopter and come in and, and join them, and then he'd give the speech. Well, that day, uh, every uh, Bedouin herding sheep and goats uh, <laughs> crossed my path on the way, and uh, 
and I was late and everybody in the world was screaming at me. And when I got on site, uh, there was a colonel that got a piece of me and, uh, and he wouldn't let go until I uh, realized what stress he was under. And uh, he wanted to know why I hadn't gotten there. Just give him a cookie. Fortunately for me, the president was late. So that was, <laughs> that was a good thing too. So, but we, we got set up and, uh, and he was still gnawing at me. And I looked over his shoulder and I saw Colin Powell, Swarskoff, and uh, all the other dignitaries. And I knew why he was on my case. Uh, so uh, so you, I did you have some you did not, for him. When did you find out that it was POTUS going to be there? Uh, oh, I knew he was. We, we knew that. We had to, we had to schedule. We so had you to had all that yeah, we had to, okay. yeah, that's why his cook was with me right. a few days Got early. Out, yeah, yeah. So I knew he was going to be there. But, but anyway... Uh, it turned out uh, I had fed uh, during the war. I'd fed Schwarzkopf and, and Colin before, so it okay. wasn't, that wasn't a big deal to me. But this colonel was freaking out, man. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> but after after it was all over, President ate, uh, Ms. Bush ate, uh, everyone, all the dignitaries ate, and, and it was. Uh, and Colin and, and Schwarzkopf said, "I don't know how you Marines do it, but I said, you know, I always tell you, I have to key if I tell you." <laughs> 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 but wow. uh, but it turned out well, and the colonel. Kind of apologized to me because he was stressing and we sure. were all stressing that day, but uh, but it, it turned out well. Well, that's good. And, uh, all so well with Innsworth. Just another another story that we have. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about this book because okay. it's about mentoring. Yes. Right. And that's what I want to know about. You know, but we've got a good history of you, got a good feel for you. you folks out there in the audience should have a good feel. Mm-hmm. Now, we want to talk about this book and what it actually means. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Freedom 97.1 WSME. Welcome to Lane Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry. The Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan offices of Lane and Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane and Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane and Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane and Associates Family Dentistry. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Cino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Cino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Cino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. In a season of falling temperatures and rising energy bills, your local Bryan professional is always ready. Standing by to protect your home's comfort and defend you from uncomfortable temperatures and the higher energy bills associated with them. Ready to do whatever it takes for your home, your family, and you to be comfortable without breaking the bank. Because when the temperature falls, that's when your local Bryant professional turns up the heat efficiently. Call down AC and air conditioning at 346-4311 and let them keep you comfortable this winter. Down AC and air conditioning serving our community for over 25 years. Also, Down East can help you with your home guttering needs. Call Down East today at 346-4311. Bryant, whatever it takes. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, we're back. Our guest in the studio retired. uh, What did you retire as? What was your rank? Major. Major. Okay, man. Major in the United States Marine Corps. And uh, he's he's a fixture around Monsell County these days. And he's well known, well respected, one of the probably one of the best respected men that I know in this community. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I'm trying to find, you know, people like me, we look for dirt. 
I, I can't find any dirt on you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, you know, you, you hear things about a lot of folks out there, rumors and scuttle, but, but I don't hear that kind of stuff about you. Yeah. What have you done? Well Pick respected, gentlemen. Uh, I just do what I do. Uh, now, you retired August 1st, 1999. I mm -hmm. uh, retired to Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, extended the job of, of mentoring young people. Uh, took an ROTC unit there. And it's interesting how I got there. Uh, I was helping to recruit at Florida a &M University. My wife is from the Tallahassee area. And that is where we had initially decided to retire to. And, uh, and I was talking with the professor of naval science at Florida a &M University. And I said, you know, we should have an ROTC unit here. And he said, well, I could have never happened. Uh, there's four in town and this school downtown is to kind of a Rich school, so they will never do it. And I was talking at that time because I'd already seen this happen. Uh, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I uh, six months later, I, I was noticing he had retired and started the ROTC unit. So I called him up and I said, you stole my idea. He said, oh, I don't know what happened. Like I said, I know what happened. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you planned it. Yeah, I said, I know what happened, so don't worry. I will be my job when, when I get 30 years in Marine Corps and, and you can move on. And we'd always laugh about that, but uh, he he decided to move on earlier. Mm. And uh, and I interviewed for the job and, and was selected. Good and you. I retired. Yes. Now, let's talk about this book and your mentoring program mm -hmm. and your mentoring efforts. What's in it for you? Uh, probably uh, feel good. Uh, Payback? The idea of knowing that uh, that I'm doing something worthwhile for the next generation. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Uh, I've always had this propensity to uh, to share what I have in, in the way of knowledge, uh, assets, et cetera. And uh, throughout my Marine Corps career, I did the same thing. Uh, I tried to anyway. And uh, especially with the, with the young Marines that we had to develop to get the job done. And I uh, saw it worthwhile of investing everything I had in them. Uh, knowing that only one in five would stay in the Marine Corps. So one of the things I learned early on was uh, it was my responsibility as a leader to send that four back to America better than they came. And so I started wow. that process uh, early on in my career. And uh, so when I finished, I, I kind of wanted to see where it came from. Uh, but things had changed in 27 years uh, from when I was a value program. And uh, but anyway, I took the ROTC unit and I started to uh, good place to start mentoring, of course. Uh, and I, I quickly understood that uh, that close knit community that I grew up in had gone. Uh, still some pockets there, but uh, but that, that concept, and so it it still takes a group of people. Some people don't but it takes it takes some some people who care around uh, young people who who don't have all of the the things that maybe we was uh, afforded with two parents uh, most cases there's there's one parent at least in most communities there's 50 percent that don't have but one parent mm -hmm. uh, and so we come alongside with the mentoring program to uh, try to fill that gap with life skills uh, things that talks that your father had with you, uh, showed you how to tie tie, showed you how to <laughs> showed you how to do those little things that uh, that mom may forget to do. Uh, or don't to think about it because they're so busy uh, trying to provide and and uh, keep you on track. So we we feel that gap as as mentors. Uh, we have a group of mentors, of course, uh, Mario, you're familiar with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I started magnanimous mentoring back in 09, and uh, he started to mentor with me when he was on active duty. And so we started out at OCLC, Onslow County Learning Center, and we've been there to date. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Walton, who's the, the patron saint, I think I mentioned her in my book, but not by name. Uh, she told me that... Uh, she said, uh, she told me when I went out that uh, she said every time mentoring money runs out, the mentors leave. 
Mm. And I said, you don't have to worry about us because we don't have any money. <laughs> so, so we are purely volunteers. And uh, we had 10 schools in Oslo County now. Uh, Magnanimous, we converted to, what's the name of the original mentoring organization? We converted that to MENAC and mentoring okay. every neighborhood and community. Right. And uh, Which Mario Harris, group, y'all. Yeah. Mario oh, Harris yeah, is the yeah. CEO. Mario's a great guy. Yeah, he's the CEO, and I'm the I'm chairman of the board. And so we uh, we continue to to do that in the community. Uh, we're in the Hall of Fame in Onslow County, and both with both organizations, uh, as far as volunteers go. Uh, and so we're pretty proud of that. And we have uh, more demands for it than we have uh, than we're able to cover. Uh, but we are in the elementary schools now, with the middle schools as well as the high schools. So we're, we're all, uh, and it takes a takes a pretty special person to, everybody can do it, but uh, most folks don't have the will to do it. Uh, everybody don't appreciate young people today. And so you have to uh, have to have a lot of patience. You have to thick have skin. a lot of tolerance, thick skin, thick skin. Uh, yeah, they, and I, I remind people they, they're your nieces and nephews, so yep. uh, so why can't you spend a little time with them? <laughs> but but people, uh, you know, sight pass snow, long hair, whatever, you know, we meet them where they are, and uh, and work on their their mind, uh, sure. making sure they they uh, they're successful. And graduating high school is our number one number yeah, one goal. Yeah, without that, get that's that's a basic. That's yes. that's the floor plan. Let's take a final break here. You're live on Local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m., WSMA. WSMA. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many more at your locally owned and operated Richlands Pig. Good things cost less. Down home, down the street, Highway 24, Richlands. Whole fresh picnic, $1.29 a pound. Half cut bowl of strip loin, $7.99 a pound. Half cut bowl of strip loin, $7.99 a pound. Family pack cube beef steak, just $5.79 a pound. Whole bottom round, $3.99 a pound. White, red, or black seedless grapes, $2.99 a pound. One pound package of strawberries, $2.99. Enjoy down-home country cooking in the deli, seven days a week in the store. Country breakfast starts at 5.30 a.m. daily at your Richlands Piggly Wiggly Deli, and it's home to the famous Murrow Bowl. Can also take advantage of the fast, friendly pharmacy located inside Richlands Piggly Wiggly. Richlands Piggly Wiggly, down-home, down the street. Good things cost less. Highway 24, Richlands. Remember, say big with the pig. <laughs> Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, your trusted local carrier indoor weather team. Serving all of your heating and air conditioning needs since 1967, now offers residential and commercial duct and dryer bed cleaning, and now offers expert residential and commercial plumbing service. In case of a power outage due to a storm for any reason, be prepared with a Generac generator for your home or business. Free heating and air conditioning has Generac generators in stock ready to install today. Remember, better breathing comes with cleaner air. Let Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning improve the air quality in your home or business with professional air duct cleaning. As always, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning is available 24-7 for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing emergency needs. Turn to the carrier experts. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, locations in Jacksonville and Hampstead. Visit online, HumphreyHeating.com. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, since 1967. Relax, we're on the way. Chico's Tires, 2320 Wilmington Highway is Jacksonville's oldest tire company. And now Jacksonville's newest tire company is Little Chico's, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard. Little Chico's carries all the major brands and all sizes, such as Michelin, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, and many others. And all new tires have warranty. In addition to a great selection of new tires, Little Chico's has used tires starting at only $30. In addition to new and used tires, Little Chico's does service, minor auto and truck repair, expert custom window tinting, and towing. So if you need tires, new or used, brake service, minor auto or truck repair, expert window tinting, or if you need a tow, visit Jackie Will's newest tire store, Little Chico's, 1675 North Marine Boulevard. By phone, 910-333-0473. For Little Chico's tire service, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard, right here in Jacksonville. 
Freedom 97.1 WSME. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, we're wrapping up here. We've got uh, a retired major, Ike Johnson, in the studio with us. And uh, what, what would you say um, one of the, 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 what do you get out of this as a reward? I'm sure you've say, had some young people, I don't want to call them kids, to go through and uh, come out much better people. They come back to you and talk to you about it. They do. They do. Uh, and it's it's probably just a feel good uh, thing, but it, it encourages us as mentors to to continue to do what we do, mm -hmm. and uh, and we see we see the results of it, and that's a good thing. Uh, I think uh, as we look forward to to more mentoring, I, I have to admit that I don't see I haven't, in the years that we've been doing it, I don't see the general population getting better uh, of young people. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenges are still there that they have, but they're there to be uh, cultivated and harvested uh, by adults around them, mm -hmm. uh, developed. Uh, they, they're still made out of the same stuff that that we was made out of or and, and it's just a matter of having someone uh, uh, water that nurture that and uh, and I think we'll be just fine uh, you know from a Marine Corps perspective when I was on the drill field many years ago we'd have the old timers come through and they would always uh, give us their wisdom and uh, which was good uh, but they also would tell us uh, you know we did it this way when we was uh, when we was here, yeah, and of course uh, <laughs> I wouldn't retort with uh, with something else, but I would just kind of uh, remind them that uh, you know you you ran a mile and a half, you moved dirt in a bucket, and you did this and that, but uh, we're running nine miles now, and uh, you know we're doing this, and, and they kind of sit back, but uh, I always ask the, the Marines today, can you fight? And uh, even though sure, yeah, we're sir. very diverse and, uh, and and everything else that's going on in the military, but uh, bottom line is, can you fight and win win battles? And uh, that's the that's the bottom line. And you do it for this country. And uh, for the civilians among us, we have battles to fight every day, and we better yes. win. Um, yes, that's right. yes. Um, if someone wanted to get a copy of your book, from average to excellent, where would they get it? They could get it from it's on Amazon. Okay. Dot com, and it's also in our local. Uh, Barnes Noble's Barnes uh, book. Awesome. And, uh, so you can That's get, it, right. get it there as well. And if you can't find it there, just find me and I'll, I'll uh, make, sure, <laughs> make sure you get a copy. I'm, I'm You're welcome go. to read it. <laughs> I gotta go Highly recommend everybody get a copy of this yeah. book. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd like to use it as a reference book. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. And if someone wants to volunteer, how would they do that? Uh, just contact uh, MENAC and we'd be more than happy to, uh, to let you see what we do. And uh, then if you... Uh, and we, we let you come in the classroom with us. And, and uh, if you feel that you can can do this, then uh, we would welcome you. We have uh, males and females. Okay. Uh, we have retired uh, female Marines as well as civilians who are working with our girls and uh, young ladies. And we have uh, retired military and civilians working with our, with our young men. Okay. Awesome. And that's MENAC, M-E-N-A-C. You mm -hmm. can Google it. You'll find it. Not yes. a problem. Oh, can't miss it. Yes. We need okay. to have them back on soon. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me. Oh, no, thank you. Appreciate right. thank it. you. I, I do appreciate it, sir. Thank Very you, sir. Yes. And thanks for what you're doing for the, the youth of this world, which means for this world. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. One yes. way or the other. Thank you. Okay, God let's bless. take a break, do a little bit of Fox News, and we'll be back on the other side. You're live on local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, a.m. WSME. We're going to talk about chamber business when we come back, and not that kind of chamber, y'all. I know what you're thinking, but I knows what I'm talking about. We'll be right back. CJ Jacksonville. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. The search and rescue operation at the Tapsco River in Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after being hit by a container ship and several cars fell into the water. We may be looking for upwards of seven 
individuals. That's the latest information we have. Baltimore Fire Chief James Wallace says two people have been rescued, one seriously injured. The ship hit the bridge around 1.20 a.m. A New York City police officer was shot and killed during a traffic stop. The NYPD says the cops approached a vehicle and the suspect pointed a gun towards the officers and opened fire, striking one. The officer identified as 31-year-old Jonathan Diller of Long Island. The unnamed suspect was also hit by gunfire. No word on his condition. Police describe him as a career criminal with 21 prior arrests. Fox's Tom Rigotti, that shooting suspect was, uh, was last released from prison in 2021 and was last arrested on a gun charge last April. America's listening to Fox News. WSME. It's live and local. Real talk. Okay, we're back here, and uh, I know Kelly's going to have to leave early. So I've got something here. I'm going to read it to you first. I was hoping you'd forget about this. But. Well, this is not too bad. Not as bad as I kind of live. If you have a telephone, whether it's a landline or a cell phone, you're guaranteed to be a victim of spoofing. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the term associated with various groups of individuals out there, and I call them individuals. I've got other names for them, but not for the radio, who program telephone numbers not issued to them <laughs> into the robocalls or spam calls offering you Medicare insurance, Extended warranties on your paws and most anything else that you don't want. Turns out that for several years now, investigations into complaints filed by the Federal Communications Commission have actually been doing something to create hate and discontent among the scumbags making those irritating calls. You may have actually heard a couple of those calls that we have answered live on the air here. Doesn't take long for them to hang up once they realize they're talking on radio. Some persistent violators have been shut down after being ordered to pay millions of dollars in fines. Not likely that the government will ever see the money, but it does cause the scammers a bit of heartache. The FCC does not initiate investigations until they get complaints. If you are fed up with the spam, keep records and report them to the FCC. You can go to their website. Just Google FCC spam call complaints. Fill out the information, send it along fcc.gov forward slash consumers forward forward (laughs) slash guides and follow the little bouncing ball. Tell your friends, relatives, and neighbors to send all information to the FCC. Maybe one day we'll have our phones back. My suggestion is that every IP address where the calls originate get charged automatically for every call they make to consumers. In other words, you got an IP address and you're making your phone calls over your IP, over your computer. I want you, and it comes to my telephone number, I want to get $15 from you. It should be an automatic $15 sent to me just for the aggravation well, surcharge. I, I think everybody needs to go to jail. Well, no, they need to go by me first. <laughs> go to telephone jail. numbers can be spoofed, but IP addresses are attached to an account. Right. Well, that's a good thing. I had three phone calls this weekend telling me I had warrants for my arrest from a Sergeant Bailey at the Sheriff's Office. That's laugh. They don't have I didn't there. even, yeah. They left messages. I, I had Bailey, one time I told him, come get me. Yeah. I told him, come get me. Come on. Well, what was the call I do when I used to set the alarm off at another place of business here by mistake a couple mm-hmm. of times? Uh, I, I wait for the phone call mm-hmm. and I say, I will not be taken alive. <laughs> I pause and then there's giggling on the other end. <laughs> You're lucky with that one. I should have tried that when my smoke detector went off and Jackson Fire Department had to come to my house. I should have tried that when the alarm company called. I set fire to this. Why did you come so well, early? I'm trying to burn this house. Out. What's good, happening? Good gracious, yeah, no. dude. I didn't think about that. Okay, I'll say the other stuff that's going to really make you gonna you Yeah, You're going to save it to tomorrow. I want to give you 24 so, hours of advanced yeah. notice. So, folks, Ray from sent Lee and I a message last night saying he had something that was going to make me so mad. He felt like I was going to need a driver when I left here. And now he's going to make me wait because I have to leave another 24 hours to hear this. Yeah. So, okay. All right, I'll just. But I thought you would like the uh, the spoofing stuff. That's aggravating as heck. Yes, it is. And I, I had. We'll get them in here on my landline well, here shortly. Well, let me say this real quick. It happened to a, a client was telling me about yesterday their father here, uh, their elderly father. Someone called them um, last week, and um, when she walked through the door, her father was starting to give out his bank account number oh, no, and no, no, his no, social no. security number. She's like, "What is happening?" And they were telling him they were from Marine Federal. 
and needed some of his information. They don't do that. They and they were it. sending him a new credit card. And of course, he didn't know. And she came unglued. So they had to cancel his existing card and had to contact the bank to put in a complaint. And she doesn't know what all information her father had given before she walked through the door. She's like, Dad, don't do that. So, and, and I will say to everybody, you know, banks and credit card companies and whatever are not going to ask you this information. They should look if you they deal with them, they already have it. That's right. So tell them, just refuse to give it to them. I just, just refuse. I, I play fun with the pharmacists when I go over there and I say, what's your date of birth? I said, you don't have it. Oh, I need to try that. Why don't you give me the, my date of birth and I'll tell you whether you're right or not. Well, they want to make sure they're giving you the right medicine. I, know right? That. I have to give just them grief. You know, just hang me. up on them all. That's the same reason I go to the Board of Elections where I vote. I want one of each of those ballots. <laughs> Don't you do that? Some people probably are such doing a that. troublemaker. Well, yeah, all kinds of it's not a problem. Jason, Jason understands me. Yeah. But uh, you know, I just want to know what the Chamber of Commerce is doing about all these spoofing calls and, and all that hate and discontent and telephone calls that people get. <laughs> Call the FCC. <laughs> <laughs> you were listening, weren't you? <laughs> yes, I was. Red Legion. Legion. Foreign Legion, though, right? Yeah. French right. has a foreign legion. That's Why can't true. they have a a Legion Lorette. I get called Legion a lot. I know you do. <laughs> Be gone. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well. Spring has sprung at the Chamber of Commerce. That's yes. for sure. Spring. It was a, reminds me of a poem that one of uh, my classmates wrote when I was a senior in high school for the newspaper, the whatever the, we called it in those days, the Cardinal or something. And it's just at the beginning of the spring. Spring has sprung, fall is here, summer is here, and it's hotter than... Okay. <laughs> we can stop. He never stops. No, I don't remember that little ditty. That was fun. That was cute. So <laughs> wonder he didn't get into trouble for it then, those days. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on down at the chamber? Do you have a parade yet for Christmas? Uh, we What's do it? not have a theme, but it is November 23rd. See, I told you she would know. <laughs> I said it was too November soon. 23rd. November 23rd. That's okay. just before yeah. Thanksgiving. Yep. Always before, that's I mean, right. the Saturday Saturday. Before Always Thursday. the Saturday before. And this is okay. going to be our 70th year. Whoa. <laughs> 70. Started in New River Shopping Center. I remember going to one in New River Shopping <laughs> yes. Center. I went to several in New River Shopping Center. Right. So. When New River had a shopping center. <laughs> well, they still do. It's progressing. It is. It is. But before the parade, we do have some things coming up in April and May. Oh, good. So uh, first off, I want to talk about the Engaged on Low Bridal Expo. So that's going to be April the 14th. Okay. It'll be at the Jacksonville Commons. If anybody is in the business for uh, weddings, we're still accepting vendors. Mm -hmm. But if you're planning to get married... We want you to come, and that's going to be Sunday. <laughs> She's shaking her head. No. <laughs> It'll be Sunday, April the 14th. Okay. We found uh, the last couple of years, Sunday seemed to work better for folks, oh, okay. get better attendance. Especially if it's raining. Yeah. And um, it'll be held uh, 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Okay. Um, if you pre-buy your tickets, the price is $15. If you want to wait and buy it the day of, it's $20 at the door. Mm -hmm. Now, the hook is if you're one of the first 100 brides to get there, we got a special goodie bag for you. Ooh. So, need to line up at one o'clock. Do you have to be female to be a bride? <laughs> Absolutely bride? not. And okay. we're seeing more and more um, yeah. the grooms are. I'm just that, asking. Yeah. The very, I wasn't being facetious. There. I know you wasn't. The very first year, I think we had maybe two grooms mm -hmm. that came to prize. Cool. And now we're seeing more and more of the couples come together because they're both engaged in what we're going to do. And we will also have a um, fashion show from Something Blue. Oh. And what we do is we have an area and the, the models stay stationary. And the visitors walk around, and that way you can touch and feel and get a close-up look I don't know. <laughs> at the wedding dresses and the bridesmaids' dresses <laughs> and all that. Well, <laughs> that's pretty to. cool, though. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. Kind so, of a reverse. If mm -hmm. I was still in the business of uh, photographing weddings, I've done over 400. 
Yes. I would uh, I would do that, but I don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore. Well, you can still come take pictures, drivers, and I won't no. charge you $15. <laughs> <laughs> I'll charge you $125 an hour. Ouch. <laughs> you better get it done in the first 30 minutes and be gone. <laughs> That's what I tell you. It's two hour minimum. It doesn't matter. <laughs> And so the next thing we've got coming up, um, of course, in April is um, Administrative Professional Celebration. Well, Administrative Professional Celebration. Okay, explain okay. that one. Okay, so this started all the way back in the 50s when it was called Secretary's Day. Uh-oh. And, I then, that. Yeah, and as things progressed and titles changed, they changed it to Administrative Professional Day. And so we're going to celebrate that April the 23rd. Um, it's at Marston Pavilion. And uh, tickets for that are $25. You can still buy them online. So if you've got an admin that really does an exceptional job, bring them to the breakfast. It starts hmm. at 8.30 in the morning. We go to about 10.30. Uh, we've got a keynote speaker. And one of the 18 nominees will be named the Administrative Professional of the Year. Wow. Nice. Do you remember, uh, in, well, you don't, in the 50s, there was a TV series called Private Secretary. Uh, it, it centered around a secretary wow. and her duties. Yeah. Nope. Nope. You don't nope. remember it. Mm, I don't remember that either. <laughs> Anne no, Southern, I think, young. was her name. Real oh, name. Oh, wow. It's an actress. I don't know why that came back to me. But anyways, I guess this yeah. dates back to then. <laughs> Absolutely. And then moving on, when we hit May... We are bringing back the um, business expo. We've Good. had, like that. We've had requests it's from time. the members, and so we said, "Okay, it's been dormant for a few years mm -hmm. because of what we don't talk about anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about that anymore." And so we decided this would be the year to bring it back, and it's going to be on May the fourth. We're going to take it back to the American Legion building because you've got plenty of room oh, in there yeah. for lots of vendors and um, outside vendors, too, because we'd like to have food trucks and ice cream Yay. and all those good things. So, so all the vendors have to be chamber members? No, but I'm going to charge you a premium if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are, you're going to charge what? It's less. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, hang on. I got the prices right here. So, um, yeah, if you're a chamber member and want a single booth, it's three twenty-five. We'll do you a double booth for four fifty. If you're a non-chamber member, it's four twenty-five for a single booth and five fifty for a double. Okay. So, you know, and this thing is always so good. And if you want to be a vendor, of course, we're still taking vendors for that. And what we'll do is you're going to be able to set up on Friday the third during the day mm -hmm. and then we're going to have a vendor only mixer five to oh, okay. seven so that the vendors nice. have an opportunity to do business and network among themselves and then on saturday will be when the public will come so we'll think okay. we think that's going to help the vendors because we have heard over the years that's where a lot of the business comes from sure. is vendor to vendor yeah the um Similar thing for your your cohorts down in Swansburg. They've been doing it for years as well, mm -hmm. and right. um, they always have a great turnout. Yeah, they do a good job with theirs as well. And gosh, I don't know how long they've been having theirs, but it's right. been, a been a long time. time. So it I sure remember has. doing your business expo, but it was back in 1901. Funny, <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing one for the post office. Mm -hmm. It was 1999, something like I don't remember, I so. but. But, um, it was big then. Mm -hmm. And I think it will. I think we'll see um, a good turnout this year. And, of okay. course, admission is free. Oh, that four-letter word. That wonderful four-letter word. So um, hopefully we'll get a good turnout from the public on that day. There are, Of course, there's other things going, but there's only so many Saturdays in a yeah. year. Oh, of course. And this is such an active community, which I think is a good thing. Yes. It's, it's not something, I mean, what time do the doors open? Uh, we're going to open the doors at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And you, you don't have to stay there until closing. Oh, no. You can go through and check out all the booths that you want to check out. And those and that you don't want to check out, you can check them out. Anyway. goodies. And, oh, yeah. yeah, you can get all sorts of stuff. Vendors typically will have free samples of this or right. at least cards and whatever. So you find something you like there. Do you have some already lined up? We've got a few. Um, the one that I think is going to be uh, the most interesting, they called the other day. We have a company here. It's called Executive Hauling. 
Executive Hootie? Hauling. Oh, okay. I think I met them. And he's going to bring in a dumpster. Yeah, that's what <laughs> Oh, I know who that is. Yeah. Yes. I believe I know who that is. Took, yeah. took advantage of that one just recently for mm-hmm. two weeks, by the Very way. Good. Very good. Big old, big old container. If you're moving or you're selling your home and you got 50 years of junk right. stored in there, you can't get rid of it any other way. Call the dump man. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Bring it, put it in your driveway. So put it in your driveway. You load it up. They'll come pick yes. it up. They'll dump it. I need to call him. And yeah. if you need it again, just fill mm-hmm. it up again. And, of course, we've got some of our local um, real estate agents that are going to be there as mm-hmm. well. They're right. always there uh, promoting their business. So it's it's going to be a real mix, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, don't forget, a lot of them do some really great door prizes. Yes, so, yep. so I'm mean, looking forward to that. All right. Sounds like a winner. And uh, admission is, again, free. free. So if you're a vendor in the area, if you're a member of the chamber, you can get it for three twenty-five. Three what? Sure. Single booth. Single yep. booth. Three twenty-five. Three twenty-five. Double booth, four fifty. And if you're a non-member, go ahead and sign up, and you can get it for those prices. Exactly. How's that sound? That sounds great. Okay. And I do have one more little thing. Okay. Um, Forgot all everything that I wrote down, <laughs> but um, so so small business week is coming up in May as well, and this is going to be our thirty fifth year of doing a small business of the year. Mm-hmm. So we're currently taking nominations. So we're a small business. Fill out the form. Okay, it's right there on the website, and um, so we'll be celebrating that on May on Thursday, May the sixteenth, and we do a breakfast at um, Oslo Memorial Hospital. Mm-hmm. Oh, good food! Uh, good food! Good food! Good food! We're so fortunate that they always want to sponsor this every year. And in addition to the small business of the year, we also give the Duke Energy Citizenship and Service Award. Hmm, nice. So this is longevity. It can be an individual. It can be a nonprofit organization. It can be a business. And we're taking nominations for that as well. And we do have the tickets on sale. So uh, tickets for the breakfast are $16. Non-members are $20. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we got going on in the next couple of months. You have a lot. I, I put your website on our Facebook and YouTube page right now. And um, so I encourage everyone to go in there and click on it. Take a look at everything you have upcoming. You stay really super busy. It's always fun. I, yes. I understand that. And yes. we still answer our telephones. With a yes, air they do. breathing person? Living person. Air breathing. Good. I like that. <laughs> Yes, they do. Punch one for English, punch two for anything else, punch four for Swahili. I was just looking at your website and I noticed you have a link for Duke for power outages. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You want to know if your power is out? Yeah. Look at the lights. If they don't come on, your power is out. No, I'm just kidding. You'll find out where it is. Yeah. Yeah. And how long it will, the probability. I I was just looking at it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, Link. And uh, I'll, let me just warn you guys one more time now. We're, we're in the spring season. We're going to have thunderstorms. We're going to have all sorts of stuff from time right. to time. Then we get into that other word. Uh, and it, 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 even if you think that somebody has called, your power is out. Go ahead and make the call. You're, you've got an electric right. bill. You don't know who your provider is. Look at the bill. It'll tell you. And then you make a call. Why? Because the power may be out only at your house. There's a line that comes in from the main line that runs in front of your house. There's one drop that comes straight to your house. And if something has happened to that drop or that transformer, it could blow. Nobody else is affected. Therefore, nobody else is going to call. Better to be safe and call. They will also immediately, when they the automation will answer the phone, and they say, oh, we recognize your telephone number and because it's associated with your billing and the power is out in your area. We have crews that are working on it or no, we don't know that the power is out at your house, but thank you for calling. Duh. Yes. So there are ways to do that, but make make the call. That's Always. the only way, you, only way you'll know for sure. That's it. Now, how long has the chamber been the chamber? 1942. 1942. Older than I am. And you were originally, where was your office originally located? The, the, I know, Wine and Wares. The Wine and Wares store. Yes, yes. You know, um, 
Swansboro is known for its mullet festival every year. Mm -hmm. Hampstead's got the spot festival every year. Mm -hmm. Sneeze Ferry is the shrimp festival every year. Yep. Do you know that the chamber sponsored a festival here? No. Based on a critter of the sea? No. It lasted one year. <laughs> That's before Loren. Yeah. What, what was it crit called? What critter was it? The Skate Festival. <laughs> I kid thee not. I'm In the seventies, skate, mm -mm. and now we know it only lasts one <laughs> year. <laughs> Lorette, thank you. That's a good trivia question for somebody know, out there. Absolutely, the way. thank Look you. Look it up. I'm sure you got it in those dusty files there somewhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been director? Um, eleven years. Eleven years. Wow. wow. Yep. Oh, 11 years. Well, thank you for what you do. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I'll we tell you appreciate what, it. I got a heck of a staff in there, too. Yes, you do. You have a great staff. Every time I've ever gone in there, everyone is so helpful and so polite. They do a very and Like very she good said, job. they do answer the phone, too. Yes, I know they do. That's good. <laughs> yes. I like that. Yes. And they, you can direct it. They'll ask you, who are you looking for? Or is there somebody, you know, they'll, they'll screen you and right. find out who, what you actually need. Yeah, because it is good. a busy building when you think of all the renters we have yes. in there. Yes. It's a major operation there. Yes, you all do. Right, Lorette, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you have you a good so one. We'll see you on the next go-round. Live at Local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME, back after weather. Freedom 97.1. For 40 years now, people throughout Jacksonville and Onslow County have trusted Barnes Diamond Gallery for all their jewelry needs for every special occasion. They understand that every day is a special event for someone, whether celebrating a wedding, anniversary, birthday, engagement, or graduation. Let Barnes Diamond Gallery custom design something for you. Barnes Diamond Gallery does on-site repair in addition to their quality and selection of diamonds. Diamond fashion bands, pendants, watches, earrings, gemstone rings, and necklaces for anyone for any occasion. Major credit cards accepted. Layaway available. Barnes Diamond Gallery offers appraisals and paid top market prices for gold and silver. Barnes Diamond Gallery, 461 Western Boulevard, Suite 120, Jacksonville, open 930 to 530, Monday through Friday. Mohawk All Pet Protection and Warranty is the only cover protection and warranty for all pets, all accidents, all the time. Because your pets are family members too. No matter how you live, we got you covered. Soft, luxurious, smart strand forever clean carpet. Gorgeous, durable, solid tent, luxury, Tile. Mohawk has the ultimate floor for every room in your home that's suitable for all pets. For details, contact Watkins Floor Covering online at WatkinsNewFloor.com. Watkins Floor Covering, thanking you for voting them the best of the best for 2023 in the flooring covering and carpet cleaning category. Watkins Floor Covering, they're more than just floors. It's custom showers, custom tubs, carpet cleaning, backsplashes, bathrooms, commercial, retail, and home flooring too. Watkins Floor Covering, family owned and operated since 1997. With locations in Jacksonville and Star City. Walking Sport Covering, you stand on it, we stand behind it. When you need comforting, who do you call? An old friend, right? Jacksonville Heating Contractors services the heating and cooling needs of our area with dependable quality train systems, guaranteeing indoor comfort for your home or business. In addition to quality train systems, Jacksonville Heating Contractors offers 24-hour emergency service, Nate certified technicians, and over 50 years of experience and service you can trust. And with the Jacksonville Heating Contractor Service Agreement, you never pay retail for heating or cooling services and receive priority scheduling. Remember, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in New Bern, you can call Trent Heating and Air Conditioning, 252-633-2200. In Moorhead City, Sea Air Heating and Cooling, 252-247-1122. If you need service or repairs, just call an old friend. Jacksonville Heating Contractors, an independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. For deals on main systems and more, visit anoldfriend.com or call 9 one zero three four seven twenty eight forty three. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Chino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Chino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Chino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. And the forecast calling for a small craft advisory to remain in effect through late Friday night. 
Yeah, it's going to be kind of choppy out there. Northeasterly winds offshore today, 10 to 15 knots. Seas 5 to 8 feet, except 2 to 4 near shore. If you want to fish the ocean, stay close to shore, okay? Dominant period, 11 seconds. That means those big waves are going to be far apart, but they're still big. Sounds and rivers, a moderate chop. Wednesday, tomorrow, easterly winds, 5 to 10 knots. Seas 4 to 6 feet, 2 to 3 near shore. Sounds and rivers, a light chop. Easterly winds on Thursday, 10 to 15, becoming northeasterly, 15 to 20 in the afternoon. Then northerly, 20 to 25 uh, later in the day and early evening. Seas 4 to 6 feet. Sounds and rivers are moderate chop, I mean choppy in the afternoon, then increasing to rough. And today is going to be mostly sunny with a high near 65, north wind 5 to 7 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a low around 50. Wednesday, a 30% chance of showers, mostly cloudy with a high near 68, southwest wind around 8 miles per hour. Wednesday night, 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms likely. Some of the storms could produce heavy down, rainfall. Cloudy with a low around 59. Thursday, a 90% chance of rain, high near 63. And Thursday night, a 60% chance of rain. Wednesday, Thursday, yep. a lot of rain. Yep. yep. And then yep. it's going to be sunny and beautiful for Easter weekend. That'll be good. Yes. Maybe you have a Very great nice. sunrise, Easter sunrise. That would be nice. Yeah. I just wanted to remind everybody, too, that the North Carolina Highway Patrol is doing their annual safety campaign to help remind drivers to slow down. It started yesterday. It runs through the 31st. Uh, this program is called Speed a Little, Lose a Lot. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Yes. I'll tell you something else. Uh, there's a, a, a new extension of a highway, of a roadway here in Oslo County in Jacksonville. It's called uh, Commerce Road. Yes. Uh, now uh, Commerce Road runs all the way from Country Good Club Road secrets. by the food line across Western Boulevard. Yes. And where it dead ended at one point in time, it now continues all the way out to Piney Green Road. Right. So that's a new little strip there of about two tenths of a mile or something. And there are a lot of people are using that as a basically a bypass. And a lot of people on a bypass are running in excess of the posted speed limit. Let me explain to you what the posted speed limit is along this stretch of the road. Mm. 25 miles per hour. Now, let me tell you why you should pay attention to that. Even if you don't care about the little kiddies running around out there, even if you don't care about the kids on bicycles or the people walking the dogs, mm -hmm. even if you don't care about that, there are one or two police officers mm -hmm. Yesterday, there were two stationed sure different places, and they are running their ghost cars. Yes. You know what a ghost car is? Yes, my the, neighbor has a ghost car. That's the ones that the, where the lettering on the side that says police, you got to look at it very closely because it's very subliminal. Yes, you can't really see it during the daytime. By the time you see it. It's too late. If you're running over 25 miles per hour, they're going to say, hey, sir, may I see your license and registration, please? Or ma'am, give it up. I'm going to tell you, they've been pretty good about that stretch of Country Club yes. Road um, between Western and Belfort. Too. Oh, yes, absolutely. They're always sitting over by that bypass. Yes, so. they're there. Though. Actually, I've seen them before they got to the bypass. I am, too. Thank I'm goodness. For Yesterday on Belfort, had a lady pull out from the furniture store. I guess she thought there was a center lane. But when she got out there, she realized there was not. She pulled out in front of me. And pull in, and there was an oncoming car, and I don't know how we missed her. I really don't. Now, let me give you one more little piece of advice for all of you people who do not know it. When you are on such as a, a way there's a three-lane road or a two-lane road, four-lane road with a center turn lane, you cannot pull out from a side street or a side business and get into that center turn lane and drive anywhere. It's true. To make your way over to the other lanes. No, it seems like a good idea because traffic's coming from both directions, but no, you can't do that. There You're are reasons right. you can't do that, but forget about mm -hmm. those reasons. The only thing you need to know is that there's a law against it. Right. It comes under Chapter 20 of the North Carolina General Statutes. <laughs> all right? Don't do it. I see it all the time. The reason for it is you pull out in there and some car is moving over there, merging into that lane to make a turn. Then all of a sudden you've got a Mexican standoff. Right. Nobody can go anywhere. And hopefully not and an you accident. do not have the right of way. Right. How's that sound? I, I'm t every day, every day, every day you see it out there yeah. in traffic, somebody God. doing something stupid. And the other thing is, all y'all driving right now, 
just drive with your left hand for just a minute. Look straight ahead. Then reach your right hand down there behind the steering wheel, forward of the steering wheel, toward the front of the car. There's a lever there. Yes. It's a little lever that sticks out. You push it down, and a little light starts blinking on the right-hand side to indicate that you're going to turn from your existing lane onto either into another lane to your right or to a side street to your right or to a business to your right. Push it up back to the center position. It doesn't blink anymore. Push it up to the left side, and the same thing occurs. You can turn into the turn lane at that time if there is one, or you can turn left. Correct. But if you don't turn that on, we don't know what you're doing. I've on any given day, I'll find about 50 to 60 percent of the people not using that when they're turning, and about 90 percent when they're changing lanes. Do you know, according to North Carolina Motor Vehicle Law, if you are in a left turn lane and it's left only and it has a left arrow, you do not have to use your turn signal. If you're in, in to get into that lane, you do to get into it, but once you're into that lane, you do not have to use it then because that's assuming that that's what you're that's doing. Right. Left I do it anyway right. because I do too. people do not know what I'm thinking, especially coming off of Western crossing over 17 to make a left onto 17 right there at that big intersection. Yeah, and you've got two lanes going this way, and two lanes coming at you going yep. the other way, and I never know if something's going to go straight. Yeah, I know. So I use turn signals. So do I. Okay, two people have been rescued from the water, one in critical condition now, according oh, yes. to officials. Uh, this is where the bridge collapsed about 1.30 this morning after it was struck by a ship, mm-hmm. a container ship uh, that uh, was flying a Singapore flag. Don't know what country it's from. The name of the vessel is the Dahl, D-A-H-L, trying to get a little bit more information about it. But it apparently was off course. Whether how it got yeah. off course, I don't know because it was leaving the port of Baltimore and uh, going to head offshore, but it got to the Francis Scott Key Bridge and instead of crossing under the bridge, it's a high rise bridge like it's supposed to, it moved to the right of the channel, struck the bridge, and I mean not just grazed it, no glancing Straight. blow, it was a head on for one of the abutments on the side of the channel there, the. Uh, Bridge came tumbling down, several cars in the water, a half dozen or more. Two people have been pulled out. Like I say, one's in critical, the other is okay. Don't know how many other vehicles are there. Uh, seven have been mentioned. It was in 1.30 in the morning, so it was not the height of traffic time. Thank God for that. Um, don't know how many people are in the water. I, guess, I assume that everybody else that was at, were in their cars are probably missing at this time. Nobody else has been recovered that we know anything about. Uh, the rescue efforts and the search efforts are continuing. The bridge and its collapse uh, did some damage to the vessel, of course, and the vessel caught fire. Crazy. Not sure why or how, but it caught fire. Unless it was electricity involving some fuel or whatever. Right. But they call fire big plumes of black smoke. That's an indication of a petroleum-based product burning. Uh, clouded the area. So it's a, it's a, it's a scene. It's not good. Um, news will have oh. for the rest of the day, no doubt about it. Oh. Investigation is underway. The FBI has been called in uh, as a routine procedure. they got an office in Baltimore anyway. Coast Guard is on scene within minutes. They have a Coast Guard station there at Curtis Bay within just about three miles or three and a half miles of the bridge. Uh, So they're on scene. Helicopter, military and uh, police helicopters and rescue choppers are on the scene. Um, Any civilian aircraft have to remain above 2,000 feet. That includes the news helicopter. I only know of one that was there early on. That was WBAL. So... um, they were shooting some stuff, but it was so dark that they were, uh, you know, like a half mile up. Yeah, I was just reading a breaking news clip, and I tried to click on it, went to video. So, but they were saying they were using sonar, and yes. that they have discovered some submerged vehicles. Yes, so. there are several of them there underwater. Now, in that channel, uh, where I'm assuming that's where most of them are, uh, the channels will be probably at least 40 feet deep. Mm-hmm. That's what most of the vessels right. will draw, probably closer to 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the water's going to be deep. It's within having range cold. and cold, yes. 40 to 50 degrees. Hypothermia has set in. Um, there's no doubt there will be a, a greater body count before it's over with. Right. 
So tragic situation, very tragic. Um, mm. Don't oh, know the of that news this morning. Then watching those videos, it was horrifying. I was sick to my stomach. Yeah. I was just like, it's um, tragic, terrible. Uh, resources from Virginia are also likely to assist Baltimore in, in this uh, this mess. They got a lot of resources there um, in Virginia as well. So we'll stay in touch with that. Yes. Okay, let's take a break. We'll take your calls if you want to chat. Nine one zero three 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 zero one three nine. Nine one zero three 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 zero one three nine. You're live on local real talk. We'll be right back. WSME. If you plan to rebuild, remodel, repair, or do cottage or home improvements, Williams Hardware carries power tools and equipment, chains and fasteners, plumbing and electrical supplies, along with Gerber, Buck, and Case Knives. Williams Hardware is your helpful handy hardware store. Williams Hardware cuts glass to size and cuts and threads to pipe. When the chores are done and the cleanup is finished, light up the Wilmington Grill from Williams Hardware. Williams Hardware, 3011 B. Bridge Street, Morris City, open Monday through Saturday from 7.30 to 6 p.m., and Sundays for your convenience, noon till 5. On Williams Hardware, 252-726-7158. Tammy Fry Allstate, Swansboro, reminds you to check your mailbox and find your quote on homeowner's insurance. Tammy Fry Allstate, Swansboro, goes the extra mile to make sure you're in good hands, like helping you customize your home and windstorm coverage with their write-your-own home policy. Yes, say even more when you bundle your home, auto, boat, motorcycle, and even your golf cart. Remember, if it rolls or floats, call Tammy for a quote. You and everything you own are in good hands with Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro. Call today, 910-326-5383. Tammy Fry Allstate, 638 West Corbett Avenue in Friendly City by the Sea, Swansboro. Check your mailbox today for savings on your homeowner's insurance. The best deal for the grill is at Jones Hill Peak Gas and Oil Company each Friday. Every Friday from 8 a.m. till closing at 5, Jones Hill Peak Gas and Oil Company will fill your 20-pound LP gas grill cylinder for only $11. You heard that right. Each Friday till closing, you can have your 20-pound LP gas cylinder fill for only $11 at Jones Gas and Oil Company. 3881 Wilmington Highway in the heart of Verona. In addition to saving money on your LP gas for the grill, Jones Gas and Oil is your full-service gas and oil company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural gas and oil needs, as well as gas appliances, LP replacement parts, fill cylinders, and tankless water heaters, and they offer a 10% military discount on installation. Remember to get that cylinder filled every Friday until closing for only $11. Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881, the Old Wilmington Highway, Corona, phone 910-346-6384. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper in print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that, too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos, too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net, where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. It's, it's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Okay, we had so much news going on this morning. Some wonderful guests in here this morning and some great yes. information. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot with politics yet. Sure. Donald today? Trump's record-setting bond exceeding $450 million was dropped to less than half of that, yes. $175 million, in an appeals court Monday. Trump said, no problem. He's going to pay that as he prepares to fight the original decision all the way to the Supreme Court, if mm. necessary. Yes. That's what the Don said. The $454 million bond payment came as a result of civil fraud allegations from New York Attorney General Letitia James. Trump must post $175 million within 10 days. He said he'll abide by the appeals decision and will post the bond. If Trump does post $175 million by the new deadline, it would effectively block James from attempts to seize Trump's assets as he continues to appeal the judgment by New York Judge Arthur Ingram. 
The former president and the presumptive Republican nominee for this year's presidential battle with Joe Biden said such rulings are bad for businesses operating in New York. Many, he claims, have already relocated and others are thinking about making a move. He cites anti-business practices and decisions by politicians who have taken their battles to the judicial system for some of the state's problems. One of Trump's attorneys, Christopher Keis, said the rule of law must triumph over the political agenda of Attorney General Letitia James, who vowed when she was campaigning, this is what she said when she was campaigning, I'm going to get Trump. Yep. Not a good sign. Nope. If she had said that she would work to ensure justice was served, a different story, but for a person campaigning on a platform to get Trump for the top judicial job in New York, that is a bad thing. James is among a growing list of judicial officials who are catching a lot of flack for what many claim are political motives. I do not know, and I certainly hope it's not true, that the judicial system is playing politics simply to keep Trump from returning to the White House. But I can see, based on headlines and news stories from multiple sources, many of them not fans of Trump, by the way, why a lot of people think that is the case. We shall have to wait and see. Good morning. Who's this? This is Don in Jacksonville. Hello, Don in Jacksonville. What's up? How are y'all this morning? I don't know. I, don't know. It's, it's, I think it's Tuesday. We're doing okay. What's up, Don? Listen, uh, you, you guys are talking about Trump, and I was calling about some of your. Uh, you, you do such a great job all the time talking about traffic here in Jacksonville, <laughs> yeah. County. We got plenty to and, talk and, about. <laughs> we live every yeah. day. And last week you were talking about a phone number people could call for the, with the police to report a license tag that uh, passes school buses. Yes. Oh, yes. Is there a number that you can call to report the hundreds of people, lazy people, who park in handicapped spots that are not handicapped? Absolutely. Sure. You dial their administrative okay. number at any time you see it. You, if you if you know that they're not handicapped, but they park in a handicapped parking space, they cannot even do that for a split second. And, and, and my question is, does anybody know if anybody, law enforcement in Jacksonville or Onslow County, enforce? You know, you see the sign says $250 maximum fine, but I've never seen or heard of anybody that's gotten a ticket for that. For parking in a handicapped spot? Yeah. Yes. I don't know about around here, but I uh, I certainly gave one down in Curry Beach. <laughs> that's a good okay. question. We'll have to get our police chief in um, yeah, I mean, it just, to me, that, and, and you constantly see cars parking in the fire lanes at grocery stores. Okay, now, uh, let, let me explain to you the North Carolina law regarding that. If, okay. if, if you are pulling up and you're going to let somebody out, and even if you're going to wait for them there, if you're staying in the car and you're able to move that car, you ready for this one? The law does not apply. Oh. The state law does not apply. Now, city ordinance might apply or a county ordinance might apply. I do not know what the city of Jacksonville does. I do know what the Onslow County and the city of Wilmington did but, uh, but many years ago. But if you wait in that car, the premise is that if there is a fire truck coming, you can turn your engine on and get out of the way. All right. I, I, I see plenty of people that are waiting. But okay. I'm talking about cars that just park there. And no, that's it's wrong. Okay for them to just get out and go inside well, and the grocery shop. That's what I'm talking about. The best reaction to that that I have seen, Don't. that I read about, you ready? Was a car was yep. parked in a fire zone, in a, a fire lane, abandoned. Nobody was in it, so it's abandoned as far as I'm concerned. And as far as the fire department was concerned, and they had to get a hose where that fire, where that car was parked uh -oh. to the other side. The glass on the driver's side and the glass on the passenger side were both removed <laughs> with an axe and the hose was passed through. I think that's great. I thought it was. I thought it was funny. Yeah. Wow. Listen, you guys do a great job. Especially Thank you, you, Don. About traffic. Yep. Well, if you see traffic out there and you see, you know, wrecks or traffic jams or anything else, and all of y'all out there, do not hesitate to call. Right. The more information you can give quickly, immediately, and this is the only way you can do it immediately, uh, is over the air, call us. Let us know what's going on. We'll be glad to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, it'll save somebody right. some travel time. I'm all for it. Thank you, guys. Keep Thank you, Tom. Job. Thank you. We appreciate it, sir. Let's take a break. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. And again, if you want to chat, if you've got stuff you want to pass along, 
always 910-333-0139. Give us a call. We'll talk about it. We'll be right back. Freedom 97.1 WSME. Welcome to Lincoln Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan offices of Lane and Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane and Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane and Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877 Lane DDS or online at LaneDDS.com. Welcome to Lane and Associates Family Dentistry. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing specializes in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting. In fact, they paint most anything except cars, including homes, businesses, apartment complexes, decks, and they do minor repairs, wood repairs, pressure washing, waterproofing, and more, including storm repair and cleanup. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing, fully licensed, insured, and locally owned and operated by Roger Carroll Jr. Reference is available and customer satisfaction is always guaranteed. So if you want to paint and maintain power wash or need a new roof, call Southern Touch Painting Maintenance and Power Washing at 910-939-0749 or visit southerntouchpaintingnc.com. Southern Touch Painting Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing salutes our troops and is proud to be part of the continued growth of Onslow and surrounding counties. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many, many more at your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store, down home, down the street where good things cost less. Main Street and downtown Maysville. Whole Fresh Picnic, just $1.29 a pound. Bone in New York Strip Steak, $8.99 a pound. Half Cut Bone Strip Loin, $7.99 a pound. Half Cut Boneless Strip Loin, $7.99 a pound. Family Pack Cute Beef Steak, just $5.79 a pound. Pork spare ribs, $1.99 a pound. Whole bottom round, $3.99 a pound. Chicken thighs or drumsticks, $1.19 a pound. White, red, or black seedless grapes, $2.99 a pound. One pound package fresh strawberries, only $2.99. Green snap beans, $1.99 a pound. A five pound bag of russet potatoes, $2.99. Large California navel oranges, only 99 cents each. And two two liter size Coca Sprite for five dollars. That's your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store down home down the street. Good things cost less. Main Street, Maysville. Remember, say big with the pig. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom ninety seven point one WSME. Not one zero three 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 zero one three nine. Want to chat? Give us a ring at eighty. The cause of death of a college student whose body was found in the Cumberland River near Nashville earlier this month appears to be accidental. A detective investigating the case said the autopsy revealed no signs of foul play. 22-year-old University of Missouri senior Riley Strain chose to walk back to a hotel after he was told he could no longer be served additional booze at a bar where he was celebrating with his classmates. That was the last time he was seen. After he was reported missing, a search began and his body was found in the river. The medical examiner says it will take up to 12 weeks to get the full results, including a toxicology report of that autopsy. White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby said the Biden administration is perplexed by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to cancel a high-level delegation's planned visit to Washington after the U.S. decided not to veto a U.N. Security Council vote demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. Monday's resolution, which passed 14 to 0, called for an immediate ceasefire during the ongoing Muslim holy month of Ramadan. It also demanded the release of all hostages taken captive during Hamas' October 7th surprise attack in southern Israel. However, the, measures does, the measure does not link that demand to its call for a ceasefire. Wow. Rather than use its veto power, the U.S., for whatever reason, abstained from voting. 
the veto power would have removed that, you know, you've got to vote. It has to be unanimous. It would have removed this from happening. The U.S. has previously voted veto three resolutions calling for a Gaza ceasefire. Kirby noted that the resolution is non-binding, meaning there will be no impact on Israel or its ability to continue waging war on Hamas. Uh, Kirby said the abstention did not represent a change in U.S. policy despite public statements from the Prime Minister's office. Kirby said the reason for the non-commitment from the U.S. delegation is because the resolution did not condemn the Hamas terrorists. Monday's resolution demands the release of hostages but does not make it a condition for the ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, which ends in April. Hamas welcomed the U.N.'s move but said the ceasefire needed to be permanent. Well, it does. We'll quit shooting. Give up the hostages. It'll be permanent. Duh. Good morning. Who's this? This is Mike over in Swansboro. Hey, Michael in Swansboro. How are you? I'm good. Good morning, Lee. Hey, I wanted to uh, kind of get the conversation back to traffic. I heard Don's uh, <laughs> comments, and uh, Don's a good friend of mine. Um, he's espoused those concerns for years. But in light of the, the tragedy up in Baltimore with the collapse of the Patapsco Bridge, or the, I'm sorry, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge into the Patax, Patapsco River, yep. it got me thinking about conversations that have taken place here in Swansboro and in eastern reaches of the county and Carteret County about the need for a third span connecting the mainland to uh, both banks in the event one of the bridges got knocked out, which, you know, is possible to get based on the type of traffic that goes that flows beneath the barges and whatnot. Um, but what I wanted to point out was, as far as traffic, there's a, uh, there was a recent uh, meeting we had as a chamber with the town manager of Emerald Isle, Matt Zapp, and he pre presented some traffic count numbers for the year 2023. And this is astounding. For the year 2023 at the intersection of NC, NC which is Emerald Drive and Coast Guard Road. So that's the first intersection when you come off the bridge. Right. They had a total traffic count of 4,145,000 vehicles <laughs> wow. go through that intersection. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Uh, I was astounded. I mean, I, I go over there often on the, in the summer and on, in the off season. But just, just imagine if the Emerald Isle Bridge were taken out of commission for whatever reason, for any extended period of time, the economic impact on the communities uh, on both banks and also the t what tourism would dry up because uh, there's, there's other than a boat or driving down to Atlantic Beach, uh, there's no other way to get to that portion of uh, the island. Before you were here, Michael, I remember that end of the island and there was a ferry that ran from one side to the other. We took that ferry from time to time. That was well before Emerald Isle was as populated as it is now. There was Atlantic yeah. Beach. Everybody took the causeway, went over there on our two-lane bridge. And uh, on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon during the summertime, when it started raining around 1 o'clock, which it often does, yeah. that bridge could be piled up with traffic for miles and miles and miles trying to get yeah. off the island. Yeah, I think that the ferry you speak of uh, in over by Emerald Isle it probably stopped around se the early 70s when the, when the bridge was opened. It was. Uh, it stopped then. Yeah, that would certainly be a short-term remedy, but the inconvenience, I, it would just be devastating. To it would. The local oh, it would be. Th this, uh, this conversation has come up in certain corners around um, the Swansboro area. I just wrote a piece this morning, I'll post on our Swansboro Facebook page about that, and I think maybe now's the time to have a conversation with our elected officials uh, and our, our towns, our county government and state and federal, because they all play a role in it. The, the, the roads themselves are state roads, um, but they would get a lot of federal funding as well, too. I think this is this is probably some conversation that needs to happen. Whether or not it's feasible or not is to be determined, but at least have a conversation. Um, I've never been an advocate on the third span, but uh, in light of how quickly things can change in light of what happened in Baltimore this morning, um, Boy, it's possible. We have barges that go under, uh, that can traverse the intercoastal waterway. That can break loose. Overhead on approach to Bogue Airfield and the Michael J. Smith Field in, in uh, uh, Beaufort. So it's possible. That, I mean, there's there's 59 spans that support the Emerald Isle Bridge. It's 4,600 feet long. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's possible. And we have to look at that possible, possible contingency. It's uh, possible. And, you know, of years, course residents uh and people who live here and i'm just talking about two particular bridges here uh in in carteret county we have we have you know uh, not in the surf city surf um, surf, surf city is connected by a bridge uh, north topsail is connected by bridges we have bridges in jacksonville they're all over the place uh and i think it's it's a, it's a 
conversation that it's time has come. To We're definitely a county of bridges now. And then, of course, you got the Sneeds Ferry Bridge there, too. Uh, yeah. But the, the, uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, it, it can happen in Swansboro, right there on the intercoastal. I mean, you know, you've right. got the Emerald Isle yeah, Bridge. Uh, NC24. Yeah. Cedar Point in Swansboro. If that yes. bridge were, were decommissioned. Just, I mean, the traffic counts in Swansboro, we, in, in the same presentation, 34,000 vehicles cross through Swansboro every day. On yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if you take out one of those bridges and a, a runaway barge, and they do get broken off from yeah. time yeah. to time. I've yeah. read about it in many occasions. And a runaway barge with a, a tidal flow mm -hmm. like Swansboro has, because I've been there, yeah. it could it could easily land that one of those bridges. Well, you yeah. know, a, a barge coming up the intercoastal waterway, if you know where Hammocks Beach State Park is, and you yep. know how the, the bend in the ICW is right around Casper's and Dudley's. Yes. Those, right. those captains are starting to make that turn practically at Hammocks Beach because they got to know where the channel is and they got to know how to navigate through that area. If they get an inexperience or it's weather or whatever, and rather than turning right at Casper's, they go straight. You're right. They're going right into the right into NC-24, Corbett yep. Avenue, that yep. bridge. It, it can happen. Sure it can. Because the current will take it there in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right, anyway. guys. I'll let you go. Good Thank you, Michael. Good point. Right. Thanks, Mike. It's Mike McHugh right. from the Swansburg, greater area, uh, greater yeah, Swansburg greater area spreads. chamber of commerce. Got it. Got it right. Yes. Yeah, you have a very good point. Yeah. Uh, we, we, could, we could be sidelined in this area. And I'm sure that... Uh, the residents of Baltimore there never thought it would happen to them. Yeah, I'm sure there are routes around it, but um, it's going to be a problem. I have a former Navy SEAL rescue yeah, diver saw that. out there now. So, Okay, coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Yes, it is. And health day. Health day. Healthy day. How's that? We'll call it healthy day. Healthy health care. Healthy. <laughs> What you um, need to know. We got Dr. Rosemary Stein who will be joining us at 7.30 in the morning. We'll see how right. uh, both the um, the mental and the physical well-being of our kids are right. and see what, what they should be looking forward to. For It's not too early to plan for their summer uh, hiatus. No, it's not. Uh, you should actually be, as parents you, and grandparents, we should all be working on a plan to keep them active and keep their minds active and along with their bodies. They're right. becoming sedentary during the summer months or at any other time. It ain't good for you. No. It's just bad. Uh, get outside, leave the computers inside, leave your dad gum telephone inside unless you have well, you to know, leave the premises and carry it for emergency Richard, you, reasons. You brought up an excellent point. Start planning now. Yeah. Yeah. Be some, uh, you know, either some uh, field trips or, yeah, can, you know what? I Back in the day, again, it, it's been many years ago when I was the news director in Wilmington on a TV station. We used to have tours come in during the spring. Yes. They bring busloads. I don't know whether they do field trips anymore or not, whatever. Right. But the TV station was always on one of those lists. And we'd get mm -hmm. several tours. We had to alternate. The department heads I had to alternate being the host to walk them around and explain things to them. Uh, but we would set up little tours. And... Uh, I'll never forget for coming up from Columbus County, which is just down to the west of uh, uh, Wellington, 35, 40 miles, something like that, or Whiteville area. High school seniors grew up there and never seen the Atlantic Ocean. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that crazy? I'm sorry. Parents, you ain't doing your job. We used to do tours at the post office, and uh, we generally yes. took them out to the front lobby and showed them the faces on the wall, right. the pictures on the wall. Yeah, yeah. It, and those, it was pretty much it. Uh, but, I, you know, did, did <laughs> plan on some field trips, day trips here, there, yeah. or everywhere. How many of your kids from this area sure, have been we, down east, I yeah. mean, to Ocracoke? Sure, uh, with different to, families, um, and y'all can take um, turns. Harker's Island. Right. It's a beautiful place I know, there. I want to go. My sister and I were supposed to go a couple months ago, but uh, there's a there's a, a wildlife museum there. Yes. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff in that area. So y'all need to be making these trips. Yeah. The North Carolina Maritime Museum in Beaufort. Okay. Right. Come on. Just take some time and go over there. Cindy Brown operates the place over there. She she can help you out. Call for a tour. So much to do. 
especially get, on the coast. Get your kids in a, you know, get got a minivan or a big van. Just take a bunch of them from your neighborhood. You've over. got the parts. You've got Fort Macon, and then you've got. Yep. Uh, you could make a full day of that. Yeah, the aquarium up here in Moorhead oh, City. Oh, mercy. You can make several day trips and all that stuff. Oh, there's so much to so. do. Anyway, start making your plans right. now. We'll talk to Dr. Rose about that yes. tomorrow morning. And, of course, we're going to have Peter Wright joining us tomorrow morning again. Right. Uh, this will be the end. This so will be the right. end yes. of this year, this this season, anyway. Right. Uh, opportunity to make good something uh, with your health care, your, your medical care, Medicare, uh, in case you did, you did it wrong. That's this right. is a last-ditch effort here. The 31st of is right on, upon us here. Yes. And then he'll be, won't be back until open season starts again. Yeah, yeah. well, he'll be coming in here about once a month That's to right. answer once a few month. questions yeah, and stuff to yeah. get you ready for next, uh, the beginning of next season. So, Meanwhile, uh, we're going to take a break, do a little Fox News. Yeah, 10 o'clock this morning. Don't want to hear Fox. Yeah, 10 o'clock this morning, we've got uh, Rick, Rick D's, another dose of the Daily D's with some beautiful sounds, my kind of music. And then he will. Throw it to, uh, he'll throw the ball right straight over to Hollywood Man, the yes. man. Chris will be in the house, and he will be spending tunes until 7 o'clock this evening. Have a great rest of your day. We will see you in the morning. You're live in local Real Talk. Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. WSME, Camp Lejeune, W246CJ, Jacksonville. And I'm Chris Oster. Rescue crews are searching a river in Baltimore where a container ship crashed into and took down the Francis Scott Key Bridge. At this time, this is an active search and rescue mission. We know there were we know there were individuals on the bridge at the time of the collapse working on the bridge. Real Estate Transportation Secretary Paul Weedaf.